Praise God. So, got a few announcements before we start over here. Welcome to Refuge Assembly. Welcome to our online guests. It's Sunday, June 25th, 2023. I'm Pastor Dennis. And I'm Bobby, and we are so glad that you've joined us. And we are so glad to have our guests this morning, Leslie and Joe, Addison Yay. and Brett. Brett. <laughs> All right. So, um... You can pick up our services anytime on our website on the Listen to a Service page. There's also a lot more great info on our website, and our website is refugeagtn.com. Thank you, Remy. Check it out often for all the latest news and important information. A few more announcements. This Saturday, July 1st, let me say July 1st. July 1st. Now, everybody in this area knows that this church parking lot is yeah. the absolute best place to watch the 4th of July fireworks because they shoot them off right over Saudi Lake. And we're being, we're being joined by Grace Point with Pastor Terry Evans and Pastor Madeline mm -hmm. and the whole team over there. They're going to have all kind of kids events outside, yeah. a drama presentation. We're going to have hot dogs, hamburgs, and... Uh, all kind of good stuff. It's going to be a great day. Everything starts yes. here at 6 o'clock. That's this coming Saturday, uh -huh. July 1st, at 6 o'clock. Uh, what else did I forget? Did I forget anything else? It's just going to be a lot of fun. So the 6 o'clock this right. Saturday. Who likes fireworks? Raise your hands. Last year they had really, they had, yes. I mean, Every year those they were have nice, great those were good fireworks they last were. year. I like the ones that make the big booms. I'm just saying. And uh, in any case, and I like all, all well, I know which one you like, Bobby. You like the one that goes on like that. It looks like Tina Turner's hair back in the 80s. I do. It was just <laughs> great. <It> was <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's happening this Saturday. I don't know what time the fireworks uh, actually start. Last year, I think it was at 9 9.30, about 10 o'clock, about 10 o'clock right. when it gets dark. So uh, that's this Saturday that's going to happen. Another announcement, uh, our Armed and Dangerous yes, Conference yes. for Deliverance from July 13th, Thursday night, to July 16th, Sunday evening. This is probably the biggest event we've ever done here. There are people flying over from all kind of places. It's mm -hmm. going to be huge. Uh, this is the Deliverance Conference called Armed and Dangerous with Pastor Henry uh, Schaefer, Pastor Henry and Fran are going to be here. Their whole team is going to be here. Um, Thursday night is free. It's a mass deliverance Thursday yes. night. That's July 13th. All this information is on our website uh, on the new deliverance page. Yay! And uh, that's July 13th free. That's uh, mass deliverance Thursday night. Friday and Saturday, those are classes intense classes it's a boot camp all day friday all day saturday if you're interested in that uh get on our website and you could register on our events page uh it comes with package with books all kind of stuff this is our fifth boot camp that we've been to you guys have been to four of them also i, I believe mm -hmm. and it's it's intense training it's very important for deliverance ministry that's friday and saturday sunday pastor henry will be preaching there oh, i'm excited yeah. I've heard, heard him teach on deliverance, but I've never seen him preach right. I, except right. on the internet. Right. But uh, Saturday night is children. Excuse me, Sunday night is children's yes. deliverance, yes. and yes. also this is free. So if you know any families and any kids that are struggling yes. with some things and nobody can figure out what they're struggling with, be here that Sunday night, the sixteenth. Uh, I think it starts at 6 o'clock. I'll have to look at the schedule again. But it's huge. The, there'll be a lot of kids here, a lot of people, a lot of people with uh, with issues that nobody could figure out. L let me tell you, um, there are some things that the pharmaceutical companies, even though they can try to fix with pharmaceuticals, can't fix because they're a spiritual problem with a physical manifestation. Can you say Amen. Amen. Pastor Dennis, those are big words. How do you know about that stuff? In any case, been, <laughs> been studying this stuff, and it's it's important. So that's uh, that's coming up. 
If anybody wants more information, you can see us after service. Yes. We'll give you some more. There's some other people that we're going to be praying for. Uh, and we know that the Lord heals. We know how to pray. And the Lord heals. He delivers. He Praise. saves. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And there's wow. miracles, signs, and Hallelujah. wonders that happen here all Amen. the time. It's Amen. It, Amen. Anybody who's ever watched Sid Roth, the supernatural, <laughs> that's normal here. This is, no, and, but we don't take it for granted. We know that our God is able to do exceeding abundantly more than we can ask or think Amen. according to the power that works. Everybody go like this. Yes. It works in me. Amen. There's the Holy Spirit power. Glory to God. He's always better than we even think he is. Yes, he is. Amen. Above mm. and beyond. Praise God. Well, with that said, that's enough just to praise him right there. Yes, Amen. it is. Let's all stand this morning, church. And listen, when we when we praise and worship at this at this church, uh, if you if you want to be still, that's okay. But you can clap your hands, you can stop your feet. If you feel like dancing, just be yourself because we're in God's house and we're here to worship Him Amen. and just enjoy yourself in Jesus. Praise Let's the Lord. do it. You know, we love when Rhonda dances, but she's not the four. only dancer. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Today is going to be a little different, well, no, a lot different kind of a message. I know when the Lord speaks uh, to me that he has something important he wants to talk about. When I told Bobby about it yesterday, she said, that's exactly where I'm at. And I knew that's where I'm at, and that's where a whole bunch of people are at. So before we start a message... Sometimes I say, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Sometimes I say, fashion your seatbelt, because it's going to be a wild ride. This one today, I'm not going to tell you anything to do. I'm going to tell you, just enjoy the Lord. Be yourself, but the Spirit of the Lord is going to be moving throughout the congregation during this message. And... I know the message is timely for exactly this day. So if you feel the Spirit of the Lord tugging on you, or he even might give you a word, a confirming word to say with this, that will that's going to be open. And that's the beauty of uh, having this day a smaller group. But that's, uh, that's the way we're going to do it. So the title of this message is The Good Shepherd. Can we all say that together? The Good Shepherd. On our way here uh, in the mornings, that's not by our house, no, but there are two sheep farms that we pass by on the way here. We live uh, about an hour and ten minutes from here. I tell folks we live so far out in the country, you got to go in town to go hunting. In any case, but we pass by two sheep farms. And, um, oh, let me just start off by this. Oh, the words of the Master Jesus. There's nothing like the words of our Master and Savior Jesus. Something about when he speaks, 
It could bring peace where there is no peace. It could change hearts. We know it changes lives. Listen to this. This came to me when I was praying through on this message. Sometimes, after doing all you know to do and trying your very best to stay strong in the midst of adversity, and you've weathered the storm about as much as you can, you come to the place of the timeless conclusion. Everybody say the timeless conclusion. If it wasn't for Jesus, fill in the blank. Anything you want to fill in. Thank you. Yes. If it wasn't for Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, almost 40 years ago, this September will be 40 years, I would not be here because I came to Jesus at the point of suicide about 40 years ago. If it wasn't for Jesus, anybody else want to fill in the blank out loud if it wasn't for Jesus? Think about it. Oh. Well, I guess that says it all right there, Father. Yeah. Wow. Where, where would I be? <laughs> Miss Carolyn, I'm so glad you're here. Everybody say, we love you, Miss Carolyn. So we're going to be talking about the Good Shepherd. Now, at first, when I thought about this, I said, Lord, I know what you're showing me. I just want to make sure it's not a kid's message. And I felt in the spirit he gave me one of these looks. Do you ever feel that in the spirit? I said, never mind. Let's just go on with what you want to do. And the more I studied on this message, the more he showed me things. And I pray that he shows us all things this day that we need. Because sometimes after doing all you know to do, trying your very best to stay strong in the midst of adversity. Anybody's got some adversity going on in their lives right now? You raise your hand. Okay. You've weathered the storm about as much as you can. You come to the place of that timeless conclusion. If it wasn't for Jesus, let us pray. Father, we love you so much. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us even when we're not, not very lovable. Thank you for even liking us. Thank you for giving us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. Thank you for this day. Great things are going to take place this day, even in this service right here. Thank you for doing everything that you want to do, everything that you want to accomplish this day, not only here, but for our, all of our families, whether here or out of town, because you know how important our families are to us and they're important to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouted, Amen. So, we'll look at some of the scriptures here in the King James and then we're going to do a few things. Um, in the middle of when I was praying just now, that back corner, angels just walked in. I just want to let you know. That's the usual place they come in, but they were coming in right through that back corner. So during the service, if you feel almost like hands from an angel in back of you on your shoulder, even rocking you a little bit, know that the angels are already ministering to people here. Okay? Did you feel that too, Teresa? Tell me what, tell me what's going on there. <laughs> I love it. Teresa said she'd been rocking for a week, so that means you're being ministered to. It's interesting. Mo most people won't tell that, but it happens to me many times. I'm just sitting there, and I start rocking, and I start getting peaceful. It's like, oh, I know what that is. I 
felt that before. Thank you for the help. Thank you so much. Lord Jesus, thank you for sending angels. So here we are this morning. And Jesus, the words of Jesus, he said, Verily, verily, or most assuredly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. Remember that picture that was just on there with that stone wall? That's the sheepfold. Um, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth in some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Let's just stop there for a second. Okay. He that enters by the door. Many years ago, before I got saved, I was trying to find God because the church I was brought up in there was more based on ritual rather than relationship. And I felt that they were just like playing church, and it wasn't real. So I went on a quest for many years to try to find God. Three years, looked into all kind of things, even the occult. I was determined to find out who God was, why he put, my, why he put me here, and what was my purpose. What did he want me to do? After looking into all that stuff, at the end of my rope, I found what I was looking for. His name is Jesus. And he took over my life. He's been, if I was to say that uh, Jesus was a good shepherd of my life, that's such an understatement. You see, I've given him everything. I don't want control over my own life. I want Jesus to take control. Somebody say, why? Because I know how capable I am of making a mess. How's that? We'll just make it that simple. I know <laughs> somebody's po they're pointing to themselves. Anybody else capable of making a big hot mess? Okay, thank you. I feel much better now. It's not just me. But pray about everything and ask Jesus to take over and sometimes he'll even make my mess into a masterpiece. A masterpiece, I don't know, I'm just saying. He'll take the stuff that I did and make good come out of it. Wow. And sometimes he'll actually pull me away of what I think is the right way. To, son, how many people like cartoons? How many people like Bugs Bunny? How many people know the cartoon Foghorn Leghorn with the rooster. You all know we raise chickens. And all of a sudden I feel that tug in my spirit. Oh, listen, listen to me when I'm talking to you, son. And the Holy Spirit saying, I know you're trying hard, but if you do it the way you're going to do it, it'll end up to be not what you're looking for. Holy Spirit, you take over. Which way do you want me to go on this? Uh, try this. You know Holy Spirit will actually give you instructions and stuff that you don't even think he knows about, but he does. And yes, this does include doing your own repairs on some things that you have no idea what you're doing, but you're in a position where it's you or nobody else. He will give you what you need because he said he, Jesus said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And Holy Spirit is the teacher. And he knows all this stuff. And, oh, yeah, but what about mechanical things? He gives knowledge of witty inventions. Is that a scripture or what? So he knows all this stuff. Let's go on by, let's go on right there. So, the end of verse 2, He that enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Lord Jesus, I'm so glad you're my shepherd. Anybody want to repeat that? Go ahead. Whew. Let's go to verse 3. To him, to Jesus, the porter opened it. A porter is one that opens the door. The porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And listen to this very closely. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. Let me read you a note on this. 
sheepfold. Uh, Jimmy, could you go back to that first picture, and we'll go. We'll come right back to the scripture. Uh, she, oh, that's it's, isn't that a beautiful picture? I don't know where that is, but it's an old sheepfold. You see the the wall, and there's a there's a gate right down there. And but let me tell you what a sheepfold is. This refers to the place of shelter for the flocks where they might repose at night and be safe from the attacks of wild beasts. How many know there's some wild beasts out there? How many know that the, that the craziest critters live in the city? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Never mind, I'm just saying. But sheepfolds were low buildings with an opening into a court. That's the court. Surrounded by a stone wall or fence with a layer of thorns on the top for protection. Now, the thorns, I think, are gone. We're not close enough to see it. But layer of thorns on top for protection. A doorway carefully guarded the entrance. That was a sheepfold. We could go on with that, but we'll leave that be at the moment. Verse 4. And when he puts forth his own sheep... He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. As Christians, as believers, we're learning to hear his voice. How many want to hear the voice of Jesus clearly? It's important. Well, Dennis, can we really hear the voice of Jesus? Yes, there's a few different ways. One is the Logos word, reading the Bible. Word of God, amen? Then you have the Rhema word, and that's the word that comes from the Spirit of God to you. When you're walking down the street and doing this, and all of a sudden you feel that little feeling, stop. Go back a little bit and take that detour right there, because that's not going to work out. And then you find out later when you get to the other side there was a big pothole in the road and it would have messed up your car. We know that they're working on the street right out there right now. Anybody see the new tar that they're putting down over there? It's going to be beautiful, especially because anybody that's been driving out here know, know there's been some holes in the roads lately, in any case. So they're fixing us up. But Holy Spirit can give us words even as we're on the way to some place, and he'll change our path because we're listening to the shepherd and to his voice. Sometimes he talks to us audibly. It's not usual, but he does do it if it's important. Do you, how many know that if the Lord wants to get your attention, he knows how to get your attention? <laughs> Randy, I see you laughing. Sometimes in easy ways, sometimes in not so easy ways. I mean, am I on the right trail? Yep, yep. Been there, done that. Bought the T-shirt. Woo, man. But the Lord can speak to us and get our attention. Okay, we'll go there later. Let's do this. When he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Verse 5, a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. Let me give you a second note. This is going to freak you out. Eastern shepherds in the Mideast, that's where the Eastern comes from, not Eastern United States, gives names to their sheep as we do to dogs and horses. Did everybody know that? I didn't know that either. Here's the note. Eastern shepherds, they give names to their sheep as we do to dogs and horses. Every sheep recognizes his own name and comes when called. Even when flocks are mingled together, they speedily separate at the command of the shepherd. Is that cool or what? Everett, the Lord knows your name. Mary Jo, he knows your name. I'm sure he does, so we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's go on. This parable, as Jesus, Jesus was speaking unto them, the Pharisees, Sadducees, all the leaders, but they didn't understand. They understood not what things 
they were which Jesus spoke to them. Somebody say, if it wasn't for Jesus, let's go on. Now, you know, uh, in here at this church, we're always talking about the power that he's given us in the Holy Spirit. But at the end of the day, the bottom line, with all that power and all that stuff that he's given us, the weapons of our warfare, all that, at the end of the day, we still take our commands from the Master. Amen? Everybody has to know that first. We get our instructions and commands from the Master Jesus. And then we represent him. So when we pray in the mornings or whenever you do your devotional time, that's time for us to get instructions for the day ahead. Amen? It's much better to get instructions before the day begins than at the end of the day saying, Lord, I know I could have done that different. <laughs> How would you have liked me? <laughs> In any case, let's go to verse 7. Then Jesus says something very strange. Jesus said to them again, Verily, verily, or most assuredly, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Who oh, oh, is it, Lord? I know, I thought you were the shepherd. I am the door of the sheep. Shall we go deeper? Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Verse 8. All that ever came before me, Jesus said, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. This is the second time Jesus mentions thieves and robbers. Okay, how many in their life growing up has ever been led off course by who you thought was your friend and you got taken for a ride and it was not a joy ride. Anybody? Verse 9. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. I am the door. Ah, he is the truth, the way, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. That's what makes him a door. Amen? That's why whenever we pray, we always say, in the name of, we pray. Because he said, ask the Father anything in my name, and I will do it. Okay, go ahead. Somebody say it. Thank you very much, perfect timing. Anything. According to his will but how do we know his will his will is in his word yeah but what if it's a personal thing okay everybody I'm going to give you some spiritual instructions that I've learned over my 40 years how many people ever went out to buy something big like a new car and um you weren't sure if that was the one because that means that every month out of your money it's going to cost you. And he wants us to take care of our business wisely. And that goes for houses, that goes for anything in your life. Matter of fact, maybe I take it a little too far. But we even pray, pray Bobby and I, when we're going to, go, going to go out for a bite to eat. Lord, because we have the usual conversation. So where do you want to go? You know what the answer usually is? Exactly. I don't know. Where do you want to go? And we end up, well, I don't know. Was, that's why I asked you first. I can't think of anything. You know what we end up doing? We came to the conclusion, Lord, you know what we like. Where would, where would you like us to go? And we started doing that, and it's always good. Isn't that cool? I love that. Well, let's go on. Let's go on. We ask him about everything. He said, you'll go in and out and find pastures. Verse 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I love this line. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. How many people out there say, you know what? I like that abundant life. 
I want to hear more about that. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Oh, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, and who satisfies our mouth with good things. Help me out. So our youth is renewed as the eagles. If you want that, raise both hands and shout hallelujah. That's the abundant life, and it's in his word, and it's promised to us. Well, Dennis, it, what do we have to do? How do we learn uh, uh, so we can have this? You're here this morning. I figure that's a pretty good show that you want more abund abundant life. Amen? Okay. Verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Oh, we know he gave his life. Wait a second. I, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I know that my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. He gives his life. He redeems the sheep by dying in their place. I guess that's what we would call the ultimate sacrifice. Are you with me? At the And I've got to get back to this step one. If it wasn't for Jesus, at the end of the day, uh, we, we had a funeral in our family uh, Thursday. And I, a lot of y'all, I asked you to pray that it would go well at the funeral. It went better than good. People that we thought might have been a problem, something changed in their life. Recently, the Lord's doing mighty works out there. I don't know how he does it, but he does. And the ones that were we were kind of leery of ended up to be just wonderful. And we could tell the Lord is doing these changes. So my prayer for this morning is, Lord, change me. Who wants to say that with me? Lord, change me. Let's go on. Verse 12. But he that is a hireling or a worker and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not whose own the sheep are not. He sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. Hmm. Well, Dennis, who is he talking about? Well, some of the leaders and pastors and those in government are not making the wisest decisions. If you agree, say amen. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But we go a step higher. We report directly to Jesus. If you're with me, shout amen. We report to him. We take our orders from him. And if the orders he gives us conflict with the orders our governments give us, I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to listen to Jesus. Because we're in this for the long haul. Amen? We're in this for eternity. The government's not in this for eternity. Amen? Amen? Even though they may brag about, oh, you vote for me, I'll do I vote for Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. We talked to a pastor the other day, uh, that one of the pastors that conducted uh, this funeral. Very interesting man. Very, very nice man. And uh, he said that. He said, I just take my orders from Jesus. I, I don't. I'm not with this party. I'm not with that party. I'm with the party of Jesus. I said, you know what? I, I like that. I, th I think I'll go that direction. I don't know if that's going to be on the ballot or not. I'm just saying, I'm in the party of Jesus. Anybody with me? Man, hallelujah. So let's go on. Let's go to verse 13. The hireling or the worker flees because he's a hireling. He's just a worker. He doesn't care for the sheep. Verse 14. Here it comes. Jesus said, I am the what? What kind of shepherd? The good shepherd. And I know my sheep and am known of mine. That's why this is not religion. 
this is relationship. It's a personal relationship. He knows us individually, and we could know him. Dennis, did you just read that? Mm Mm-mm. We talk every day. Anytime you have a relationship, is conversation important? If I didn't talk to Bobby, would she be happy? If I didn't listen to her, would she be happy? It's the same way with Jesus. I want to listen to what he has to say, and I want to tell him. He wants to know how we feel. Do you know it's important to tell the Lord how you feel about things? Even if your feelings may not be aligned with his word, I know, he still wants to know how you feel about things. We make the choice, he'll make the change. Amen? Okay, let's go on. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they know me. I am known of mine. Verse 15. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. We sang a song about that. For God so loved the world that, right? This this one is interesting. Verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also, because he was talking to the Jewish leaders of that time, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Let me read you the note on that. Jesus said, I have other sheep. Somebody say Gentiles, because he was preaching to the Jewish people. He said, I have other sheep, non-Jewish people, which are not of this fold. They're not of the Jewish fold. They will, but we've been grafted in. Somebody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. They will hear my voice and come into the fold having one shepherd. They will hear his voice. Okay, how many know that when we get to heaven, it's not going to be divided up? Okay, Methodists over there, Baptists over there, Catholics over here, Pentecost. It's not going to be like that. So that's what we've got to try to get along with each other, no matter if we worship different down here. We, try to, we may not see eye to eye and everything, but like Paul said, I preach Christ crucified and that's it. We agree upon that. And with us here in this world, we've got to try to get along even with those who don't see eye to eye with us as Christians. We've got to try to get along. Now, Try. Everybody say try. Sometimes you'll be able to do it, and sometimes we will have to show grace. How's that sound? Because at this church, we preach the full gospel message. If the Bible says it, we believe it. Amen? There are some denominations who have said well God did that long ago but he don't do that no more when you're in a conversation with somebody like that just smile and pray that the Lord will open their eyes to see how many people in here right now have had a miracle happen in this church or a healing look around everybody we know that he heals We also have spoken to a number of people who said, oh, God, don't do that anymore. He stopped healing with the last disciple. Sorry, we've seen too much. (laughs) Do you remember how many times, I'm just going to give you a personal testimony, how many times that I suffered with that shoulder, neck, headache. It sent me to the hospital a few times. Had a stroke over one. And then you all prayed over me. Bobby anointed me with oil. That's been over nine months. I never had one again. He heals. He heals. Do you know that it's part of the whole salvation message? He didn't just save us. He saved us, healed us, delivered us, gave us abundant life. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe the whole thing, and we experience the whole thing. Somebody say, I want some more of that. Somebody tap your neighbor say, you're in the right place. Let's go on. 
other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them I must also I also must bring. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Well, Dennis, when we get to heaven, what about our differences there? Will it even matter? All I want to know is I just want to be with Jesus for at least a few thousand years. Everybody, did anybody here besides me ever think, when I get to heaven, I got a few questions for Jesus? Anybody ever say that? I think my my honest opinion is when I get to heaven, I'm just going to be so happy to be there. I, forget the questions. I'm just glad. You remember when Mary, Minnie Pearl used to get on the Opry? What was that? How did she say it? I'm just so proud to be here. I think that's how we're going to be when we get to heaven. What do you think about that? Oh, don't worry about the questions. I, I'm here. What? Well, what? Man, what? What's on the menu? What's what? What's going on here? You know, he'd been building. You know, he'd been building us all mansions. Did you ever wonder what your mansion might look like? Wow. Shall we go on? Oh, I'm so glad you said that because that's where I was going. Verse 17. Therefore, somebody say, the, therefore. Therefore doth my father love me, Jesus talking, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. This next scripture 18 is the last scripture we're going to look at. This scripture is a key scripture that a lot of people over the years have had questions on. This is the answer to that. The question was, why did Jesus have to die? It says it right here. Ready? No man takes, talking about his life. Verse 17 said, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. 18. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. You can say amen there. I have Jesus talking. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. So you can say amen again. Well, Lord, where'd you get this? Here it comes. This commandment have I received of my Father. Somebody shout amen, because that's the bottom line. They didn't take it from him. He suffered. It was part of the process that he gave his life for us. But he had the power to lay it down. He had the power to take it up. And that's the bottom line. Talking, as everybody say, talking about the good shepherd. Okay, Dennis. So what do we do with all that? Because, you know, here at this church, we're always talking about the power he's given us. And, we're ta and we mentioned earlier about we take all our orders and commands from him. Sometimes we need to make sure that our priorities are in perspective in the right order. Amen? So this morning... Psalm 23 is also about a shepherd. We're going to put the, there's another sheepfold, an old one. Isn't that beautiful? I know the walls are kind of broken down here, but I could just see the sheep in there. I don't know where that is. It looks like Ireland, maybe, maybe Scotland. Could we all... We'll put it right up there, Jimmy, Psalm 23, King James Version. And we're going to say this all together. If when you're saying this, you believe this with all your heart, things are going to start to happen and change in your life. You ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me 
in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, personally, I love that version in the King James. I want to read it one more time together from the Passion Translation. If you've never seen this before, this is going to give us not only understanding, but a strong anointing is going to hit us on this. Okay, here we go. Ready? Yahweh is my best friend. Yahweh means Lord. Yahweh, we could do this together. Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. Let's go on. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. Verse 3. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Verse 4. Even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Let's just stop right there. Fear will never conquer me, because, Lord, you have conquered my life. I've given you my life, laid down my life for you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for taking my life. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely for you are near. I don't know who this is for, but somebody needed to hear that this morning. You could take this personally. Verse 5. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. Verse 6. So why would I fear the future? Only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward... When my life is through, here it comes, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Did you like that? So did I. When we pray, when we get in his presence, see, in his presence there's fullness of joy. When we get in his presence, that's when he can speak to us, either through his word once again or give us something special, personal for us. I know this morning that when he always gives me extra Sunday morning along with the message, and I had a, a vision in front of me. I don't know if this vision is for anyone here at this church or if this is for somebody online watching, watching. I saw somebody, they had a, peer, a pair of sneakers on. It, they looked like red Converse All-Star sneakers. And one shoelace was undone. And I said, Lord, what are you showing me? He says, put this out there. There's somebody out there that, that rep represents them. They have one shoelace undone. Tell them they need to tie up 
the loose ends in their life so they don't stumble. Okay? So I don't know who that's for. I'm putting this out there just like he showed me. Anybody out here, I just got to ask this, have a pair of red Converse All-Stars sneakers? It must be for somebody online. But there's one shoelace, I don't know which foot, huh? Somebody in the back has a pair of red Converse on. Your sister does? You tell us she got a lot of them. This may be for her. Tell her that Pastor saw a picture of somebody that had pair of red Converse All-Stars, one shoelace was undone, and that it represented she needs to tie up, and she knows what it is, something in her life before she stumbles on it. Could you tell her that? She, if she wants more info, tell her she's welcome to call me, and we'll pray together on the phone and see what else the Lord reveals, okay? Let's see what else Holy Spirit might want to reveal this morning. I don't know who this is for. This might be for somebody online. Somebody just said, this is the day that I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. This is the day. I have some things in my life that I need to tie up so I don't stumble. Everybody, we're going to pray this together. Just repeat after me. I think this is for somebody online. I'm not sure, but here it comes. Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Lord Jesus, this day I make you the shepherd of my life. I give you my life. I'm happy to give you my life. Finally, I've waited all this time, starting today, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my Shepherd. I trust you with my life. I know you love me. I'm depending on you. Although I will do everything I know, including read your word, get into a good church, and wait for your anointing on my life because you have called me and I want to fulfill the calling you have on my life. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen.